In early January, an organization out of Nepal reached out to us specifically because they were auditing textbooks that are used in the schools of Nepal. And they had a lesson about Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Unfortunately, I had to tell them that it was a hoax. Good morning, I'm Dr. Ian Hunt, Chief of Acquisitions and Special Projects here at the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library Museum. In early January, an organization out of Nepal called Education in Every Home reached out to us specifically because they were auditing textbooks that are used in schools of Nepal. Um, and they had a lesson about Abraham Lincoln that was utilizing a letter that Lincoln was purported to have written. And they were just wanting to see whether or not this was authentic, uh, whether we had any questions about the lesson itself, and so on. This is, a, unfortunately, a, a hoax letter uh, that has been on the internet for quite some time. Uh, it's often referred to as Abraham Lincoln writing to his son's schoolmaster. That's usually how it's termed on the internet. And it is this very kind of wide-ranging letter in which Lincoln lays out all of these expectations that he has for his son's school teacher to essentially make his son grow from childhood into manhood. Uh, the letter names a number of things, including, you know, please teach my son that a, uh, a dime earned is worth more than a dollar found. Please teach my son that for every scoundrel there's a hero. Please teach my son that for every crooked politician there's a great leader. It's, it's, it's a motivational poster on steroids. It's really trying to to uh, touch on every aspect that you can imagine that would be necessary for a child growing into adulthood. <laughs> Unfortunately, I had to tell them that it was a hoax, that Lincoln did not write this letter, um, that it was one that is frequently found on the internet. And at the time I offered to them that if they could convey to us what exactly were the lessons that they were trying to convey to the children of DePaul, um, we could find something that would be authentic, that would be real, and that would still fit the bill for whatever the lesson was. So we made the offer of, of helping them rewrite that section of their textbook. Um, and then frankly, we didn't hear anything from them for a while. And honestly, I kind of forgot about it. We get quite a lot of emails here to the presidential library um, where we never hear from people again. Uh, and then literally a few days ago, uh, the same organization reached back out to us to inform us that the, the error uh, related to the Lincoln letter, along with numerous other errors in the textbook, uh, had been compiled together into a report. They had been submitted to the government of Nepal and that this was creating quite, quite an uproar in Nepal. Um, and for whatever reason, uh, rather than focusing on the, the numerous other significant errors in the book, the media in Nepal had jumped on the Lincoln story specifically and had pointed out that they had actually reached out to the experts at the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library, Springfield, Illinois, USA. I, I, I always kind of laugh when I see that, the way they write that out, um, that they had reached out to the experts and that they had confirmed that yes, the children of Nepal were being taught this inaccurate lesson. There are a lot of ways we know that Lincoln did not write this letter. Um, first of all, the language itself um, does not sound like Lincoln in any way. Uh, there's never been any hard copy of this letter found. Uh, it is not in the collected works of Abraham Lincoln. It is not in the recollected words of Lincoln. It's not in any of the sources that we traditionally check. Um, Various sources uh, wildly attributed to different times. I've seen uh, the letter being written as early as 1830, uh, which is more than a decade before Lincoln will begin even having children, much less sending them off to school. I've seen it attributed to 1860, when all of Lincoln's children were already in school. Uh, in fact, his eldest son was getting ready to go off to college. And I've even seen it attributed to Lincoln as late as 1878, when he had been dead for more than a decade. Um, the, the language just does not sound correct. The, the prose is not correct. It's, it's, it's simply not Lincoln. The themes that are used in the letter um, will some way uh, match up to some of the concepts, certainly, that Lincoln would have been pushing forward. But the reality is, is that we have a number of original letters in the collection where Lincoln was asked about education specifically. And usually the advice that he gave to people was to go out get the books, read them cover to cover, and learn as much as they could about the field that they were trying to enter into. 
he would never pontificate like this. He, he was always very much advising people that they needed to get to work and, and work hard because that's what he had done to get to the position that he was in. And that was really the best recommendation he had for people. Um, but I think most of the, the, the concepts that were offered in this fake letter um, are, are concepts that we still today uh, try to impart to children. Uh, to, to be a good leader, to, to stand up to those uh, who would do harm, to, to, to become uh, a good person. That's what this letter is, is purporting to, to, to do. Anyone who's ever been on a tour of the museum with me has to hear ad nauseum when I talk about that Lincoln is not a, a local figure. He's not an Illinois guy. He's not an, even an American guy. He is literally a global historical figure. There have been more books written about Abraham Lincoln than any other human in history. There are statues that are dedicated to Lincoln on virtually every continent of the planet. He's taught in almost every school. He is a great representation of what honesty, integrity, and leadership should be. Um, so it would actually surprise me more if, if he was not in a textbook uh, in Nepal or in, frankly, any other country in the world. He, he is such a, a shining example of, of what a true leader should be. In most of our correspondence uh, with the experts, they've talked about how Abraham Lincoln is known all over the country of Nepal, that unfortunately they do not know the details of his life. In fact, uh, the, the people that we've been talking to have said that they've been asked by the people of Nepal, is Abraham Lincoln still alive? Uh, was Abraham Lincoln black because he freed the slaves? They, they have lots and lots of questions. They know that he was an important man. They know that he was the American president. They know he saw our nation through one of its darkest hours. But they need to learn more. They're trying to learn more. That's what this educational lesson was all about, was to help teach them more about this. This happens actually all of the time. Uh, if you get on the internet today and you start looking up Lincoln quotes and, and Lincoln stories and Lincoln letters, you will find a mountain of websites that will offer you things that in some cases have some kernel of truth to them, in some cases are completely accurate, and in some cases are completely off base. They are, they are uh, total fabrications. Um, it's very easy to go onto Google, search up a specific quote, find numerous hits that will show you, numerous sites that will show you that this is purported to be by Lincoln or purported to be about Lincoln, uh, and to just shrug it off and say, well, here it is. I mean, many of these sites look very professional. They look very academic. Um, the reality is, is that like, like anything else, you should really try to go to the source. You should try to go to the experts, if at all possible, in trying to learn who this person was and, and what they really accomplished in their life. We see it all the time. We see it in books. We see it on television, in movies. We see it with politicians. Um, numerous occasions, we've seen speeches that have been given uh, both here in Illinois and in Washington, D.C. and other state capitals uh, where they purport to, to quote Lincoln and it's a complete fabrication. Uh, this, this is a daily basis almost, and I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. Um, I would really congratulate the people of Nepal that they found a problem and they're addressing it, they're fixing it. They're not just simply sweeping it under the rug or they're not just simply saying, well, this is good enough and, and we can move on. Um, we need to be teaching the youth of the world the real history, the, the, the real lessons, um, not just what we can find on the internet. If you really wanna ensure that the quotes that you are losing, using are original to Lincoln, my recommendation would be to check our website. We have a number of quotes on you can also go to the Collected Works of Abraham Lincoln, which is a database of nearly all of the, the documents that Lincoln ever wrote in his life, and that is run through the University of Michigan's website. There are other sites as well. There have been books that have been written that are solely dedicated to various quotes attributed to Lincoln. Um, you can also go to biographies and histories, uh, but I would always recommend that you take a look at these biographies and you take a look at the the, the citations that are used by the authors. Um, if, if they are going to be talking about Lincoln giving a speech or Lincoln writing a letter, there's gonna be a footnote attached to that. And it's gonna say that this speech was discovered in this newspaper in 1857, or it was discovered from this document that's at the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library or, or wherever. 
Um, I would always recommend you to go to the source of it all possible instead of simply relying on the internet.